Welcome, church, to our online service. My name is Chris. I'm one of the teachers here, and I'm excited and honored to be with you wherever you're joining uh, us from today. Hey, we would love to know where you're at and, and what's going on in your life. We'd also love to be praying for you. And so if you just want to comment uh, with whatever platform you're on, we'll have people who would love to reach out to you. Love. When you think of the word love, what's the first thing that comes to your mind. You know, maybe it's a hobby that you love to do. Maybe it's a specific food that you like. Uh, you know, maybe it's that warm, fuzzy feeling that you get after a first date or that you have uh, as a newlywed for your spouse. You know, for my kids, maybe that love is demonstrated in Fortnite. You know, I absolutely hate Fortnite, but my kids, for some reason, love it. You know, when we think of that word love, we use it as a way to conjure up feelings and emotions. But did you know uh, that love and those feelings in the English term can be manipulated by circumstances and situations? It's easily turned off and on. And when we think of the word love, there are so many things that come into mind. You know, when we look at the word love in the Hebrew language, ahava, uh, we see something much different. You see, love isn't just a feeling that is conjured up. It's actually demonstrated in action. Uh, the root word of ahava is hav, and it literally means to give. It means to give of one's self. And so literally what it's saying is to love or to ahava is to not only feel, but to give. Uh, we're going to be looking at that today uh, in our Hebrew word study. Uh, as you guessed it, we're going to be talking about love. Now, if you've been with us over the last couple of weeks, we've been digging into the Shema. And the Shema is in Deuteronomy chapter 6, and we know that that is a prayer uh, that God gave his people. And what we've been doing is, if, is we have been uh, taking words throughout the Shema, and we've been digging into the deeper significance of those things. And so today, uh, we're going to be looking at the meaning of love, or ahava, in Hebrew. Uh, we're going to go ahead and read that, so if you open up to Deuteronomy chapter 6, wherever you're at there, we'll also have it here. Uh, let's start by reading that together. It says this. It says, Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone, and you must love, or you must ahava the Lord your God with all of your heart, all your soul, and all of your strength. You know, as we come to this word, love, or ahava, in the Shema, I believe that there is a lot of depth and richness that we can pull out of it. The first thing I want us to see, or, or to really understand about that word, ahava, is this, is that God is love. God is love, and he created us in his image so that we can love. You know, last week we talked about uh, the Lord God or Yahweh, God being eternal and supreme. And one of the attributes that we know about God is that God is love. In fact, we read this in Scripture in John, uh, 1 John 4 8, it says that God is love. God is love. And so throughout Scripture, we see that God demonstrates his love in many different ways. You know, it's a covenant relationship that he made with his people. It's constant protection and guidance throughout all of the Old Testament. It's his forgiveness. We see that God loves his people. But really, it's important for us to understand that, that God's love isn't uh, just based on a feeling. Even though God does have genuine affection for his people, it really originates from his character. It's eternal. There is no beginning and there is no end. In fact, we read this in Jeremiah 31 verse 3. It says, long ago the Lord said to Israel, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love. With unfailing love I have drawn you to myself. And so we do see that God's love is shown through his affection for his people, but we also see that it's demonstrated in action. There's more to it. Remember, ahava is to give. God's love means that he demonstrates it by giving of himself to his people. We read this just a couple chapters before the Shema in Deuteronomy chapter 4. We read this. It says, because he loved you, 
or your ancestors, he chose to bless their descendants and he personally brought you out of Egypt with a great display of power. I absolutely love that. He personally, he loved you so much that he personally brought you out through the Exodus with all of those things that you had to go to in slavery. He brought you out with this great display of power. You see, God acted upon his love. And I believe that he does that for us today. Now, why is this all, all important? First, we see that, yes, that God is a loving God, that God loves his people. He feels love for us, and he demonstrates his love through action. And second, because God loves us, we can love too. You know, in, in fact, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, it says that God created us in his image. You see, he created the world and, and everything in it, and he saved the most prized possession, mankind, and he created us in his image. And so knowing that, knowing that we were created in the image and the very likeness of God, if God is love, we too can love. We can experience love, and we can give love. Ultimately, because God first loved us, we can love. But again, remember this love or ahava isn't just about experiencing love. It's really about giving too. And that leads us to our next point. Our love for God is more than the feeling. It's more than a feeling. It's also demonstrated in action. You know, my, my wife and I, Brianne, have been married for 16 years. It's just been wedded bliss, all rainbows and butterflies. Just kidding, that's not true. But I really, really love my wife. And I still, to this day, when I think about our love for each other, I get warm, fuzzy feelings. I'm, I'm kind of a touchy-feely guy, and so I, I truly get those feelings. And you know, I was thinking about this with my wife, and she's wired a little bit different than me, but I just wanted one day as I was preparing this message a couple weeks ago, I wanted to hear her love for me. And so I, I texted her and I said, honey, you know, when you think about your love for me, do you still get those warm, fuzzy feelings? Well, in full transparency, I'm going to share with you exactly what she said to me. In fact, she didn't even say anything. She just rolled her eyes. You see, because we're a little bit different in the way that we think of love. But here's the truth. Love isn't just a feeling. Love is actually action-based too. I mean, you might have heard that saying before that love or action, excuse me, actions speak louder than words. And isn't that so true? Actions speak louder than words. I can say something, but if I don't follow through with actions, it's meaningless. I can tell you that I love you, and that is really sweet, but if I don't demonstrate my love for you through actions, it's really not love at all. You see, my, my wife and I, in our love, I demonstrate action-based love to her when I do what she asks me to do. You know, when she says, hey, will you pick up the kids? She knows that I'm going to do that. That's a demonstration of my love. She, she, uh, she knows that I'm going to provide for her. She knows that I'm going to work. She knows that I'm going to be the father of our home and spiritually lead our children. You see, those are action-based love. And so we need to understand that it's not just how we feel. It's how we act as well. Now, don't get me wrong. I think it's important that, that, that we do understand that love truly is a feeling. I, I do have affection for my wife. She does for me as well. But if I don't demonstrate in action and speak and show and give her what she needs, then that's really not love at all. Remember, God's love is both affection and action. And so when we read the Shema prayer, it's God's, God calling his people toward action. And so you say, well, what, what is the action that it is? Well, in the Shema, he says, Lo love me with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And we're actually going to re read about these things. But just a few chapters later, we read even more about what he was saying. He says this in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 through 13. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? He requires only that you fear the Lord your God and you live in a way that pleases him and love him and serve him with all of your heart and soul. And you must always obey the Lord's commands and decrees that I'm giving you today for your own good. You see, God was calling his people to show their love for him based on their actions, 
through obedience, through following God's commands, through having this reverent fear and and having this relationship that says, God, you are the eternal God and, and I look to you as the almighty God and I'm going to demonstrate that love for you, God, by following your decrees, by following your act, uh, your requests, by doing the things that you've asked me to. And you see, ahava is just that. It's saying, God, I love you. I want a personal relationship with you. I, I want this relationship where you and I are close, and I want to demonstrate that love for you, God, in how I respond in my life, or how I act in my life, or the things that I do in my own personal life. You know, For most people, the Shema is a a very personal prayer. Again, it's something that they they recite morning and night. They do it with their children. And it's just something that's very personal. It's a memorized prayer that they have. And you see, the important thing is to remember that that it's just more than a personal relationship, though, right? If it's more than just that, there's action steps. In fact, Jesus, when he came to this earth, he showed us that, that, that it was more than just personally loving God with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength, it was more than that. In fact, he tells us, he gives us what more of that is. And he says this, in in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 39, Jesus replied, here's the Shema. Here's the Shema. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all of your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. He's saying, listen, yes, this is important. This is exactly what you are to do. You're you're to have this personal relationship with God. You're to honor him in everything that you do and what you say and how you act and how you lead. Whatever it is, you're to do that. And that shows honor to God. But then Jesus says something. He says, this is equally as important now, now, I think that's important for us to understand. A second is equally as important. And he says this, to love your neighbor as yourself. You see, one of the, the, most, uh, the, the most profound things that we can do in showing our love to God is by pointing other people to him. You see, we were created to be in relationship with God and to give God all of the glory but we were also created to tell other people about him, to give them the relationship that we have if we are followers of God. I think that is you know, so, so interesting that God calls us to be more than just having a personal relationship. He calls us to lead others in our life to him, to love God with everything that we have, but we should also love our neighbor as ourselves. And I mean, we think of our neighbor, does that mean we go next door and say, hey, you need to love God? No, I think it means everybody in our life. My neighbor are my, my children. I need to point my children to Jesus Christ. I need them to understand that the most important relationship that they can have is one with the living and almighty God. And so I have a responsibility in my life to lead them and to mentor them and to guide them. Fathers, you have that responsibility, you have that calling from God to demonstrate your love to him by telling your children, by raising your children, by leading your wife, by leading your kids to be fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. It means that we are to evangelize. It means that we're to go out into our workplaces, into our relationships, into our families, and we're to tell them about the love of God, the love that God demonstrated to us. We're to give that to people because we're called to do that. You see, an action-based love or an ahava love does just that. And so how do we, how do we love God? Well, again, I think it's that we show, we demonstrate a reverent fear to him. We love him with everything that we have. We do have a personal relationship with him. We obey his commands. We find out what pleases him in doing it. It means we open up God's word, which is his directive and his, his leading and his words for us. And we apply that to our life and we filter our lives through his word and his teaching. But again, one of the most important things, or as equally as important as all of those things, is to point other people to a relationship with the Almighty God. You know, I, I know at times it's difficult to do that. It's difficult to step out in faith and share, you know, with a coworker. It's difficult sometimes if you're in a, uh, you know, a troubled marriage or a relationship or you feel like your kids are, are too far gone. And, and where do I start? Where do I begin? Well, I believe... That, that you should start and that God can empower you by the power of the Holy Spirit and that he can mend those relationships. He can use you 
to bring about love in those relationships as you point them to Jesus Christ. You see, when I begin to think of actions speaking louder than words, I think clearly of what Jesus did for me or what God did for me. And I think that leads us to our last point. It's this, is that God demonstrates his love for us in the most costly way. God demonstrated his love for us in the most costly way. You know, I don't think there's any, uh, anything that, that could show this more than what we read in uh, John chapter 3, verse 16. Now, this is a very famous verse, and I think so for her reason. And to me, this is the demonstration. It's a clear demonstration of God's ahava for you and for me. It says this, that for so God so loved the world. God so ahavad the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. You see, the Bible says that there is this chasm between us and God. When God created everything perfect in Genesis, we decided to go our own way. We decided to disobey God's command for us. And because of that, there's a separation. It's called sin. You see, God's a holy God and there can't be sin. And so in our relationship, we are unable to move forward with sin in our life. And you see, what happens is, is that God made a way. He demonstrated his love. He showed his ahava. He gave in action something for us so that we could be in relationship with him. It was his, his most prized possession, his one and only son. Now, a righteous and holy God would say, okay, I set the standard, and because you've disobeyed the standard, uh, there is righteous judgment. And that judgment, the Bible says in Romans 6, 23, is eternal separation. It's death from God. It's, it's one day we will be eternally separated from the almighty God. But you see, the good news is this, is that God still makes a way for us to be in relationship with him. In fact, that's the true demonstration of Ahava. We read it in Romans 8, 5, 8. It says, but God shows his love for us in that why we will, were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, the chasm of sin could only be separated by something perfection of, of perfection, something that never sinned. And so God sent his son, Jesus Christ, from heaven. He was worshiped in heaven, lived in the glories of heaven. He sent him to this earth and he lived a life that we couldn't live, a life free of sin. And you see, what happened was, is that he took our place in the payment and the penalty of that sin, that death. He was led, he was beaten, mocked, tortured. He, he lived a perfect life that we couldn't live and he was led to the cross and he died on that cross in our place to pay the payment for the penalty of our sin. You see, when I think of the word ahava and it being not just a feeling but also action-based, there is nothing more action-based than God sending his one and only son to this earth to die in our place. And you see, he didn't deserve that, but he did it anyways for you and for me. Now, what's so interesting about this is, I mean, you, you might say, well, hey, well, Jesus, he's God, so of course he's going to do that, right? He's just going to do that for us because he loves us. But listen, Jesus was both fully God, but he was, and he was also fully human. And so he felt feelings as well. And believe me, the Bible says that when he was being ready to be led to his death, he was in a place called the Garden of Gethsemane, and he had fear and anxiety and worry and doubt. And so there was some real emotions going on. And you know, he could have chosen, his action could have said, okay, God, I don't want to do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do something else. But instead, he did something different. In fact, he did wrestle with that. He said, God, I know this is going to be difficult. I know this is going to be hard. I don't want to do this. If you can take this away from me, God, would you do that? But here's Ahava. He said, God, but your will be done and not my own. You see, he was submitting fully to God the Father. He was demonstrating his love that he was going to give everything that he had to show that he loved God. You see, he did that because he loved God, but he also did that because he ahavad you and me. You know, I don't know where it is that, that you're at or, or where you're um, at in your spiritual journey or spiritual walk, 
But if you're struggling, you know, maybe you feel like the world doesn't love you or there's a situation where you, you feel like, uh, you know, there's not a lot of love that you're feeling. There is a love, there is an ahava that will give you an amazing, life-changing feeling with hope and joy uh, and direction and empowerment. God will love you that way. But he also wants to give. He wants to give his forgiveness through his son to you so that you can be in relationship with him again. I mean, just think about that for a moment, wherever you're at. Please know that God loves you so much that he stopped at no expense. In fact, he gave everything that he can, could so that he could be in relationship with you. I believe that even where you're at today, he's pursuing you. If you haven't made that decision to start a relationship with him, would you consider that today? You know, we'd love to hear from you. If, if you want to take the next steps in your journey of faith, uh, you can comment in, in, in uh, the comments section and we'll have someone reach out to you. Maybe you are, uh, someone who's been in relationship with God and you've been living for him and you've lost that feeling. I think it's important for us to understand that when we read the Shema, that's a calling from God. And not only is it a calling from God that we love him and that we give to him, but it's also him demonstrating his love for us by giving his son for you. And so may that impact and may that change the way you live your life. May that impact how you think about life, how you lead your family, how you reach the lost, how you point people to him. Would God's love for you be demonstrated in action to him? Now listen, it's not about action. God loves you regardless of what you do. But may the fruit of our love, that fruit of that love, say, God, I'm going to give my heart, my soul, my strength, everything to you. And I'm going to, to point people to you as well. Let's pray together. God, I thank you so much, Father, that you love us in a way that we can't even begin to describe. In fact, you love us so much that even when we turned our back from you, you sent your son to die for us. You sent your one and only son, God, to die for us so that we could again one day be in relationship with you. God, I pray that we would remember and we would see the action, the ahava in that, God, that you would give, freely give the most precious thing to you so that you could be in relationship with us. God, let that impact everything that we do. God, let that impact the way I lead my family. Let that impact the way that I lead my wife. Let that impact my interactions with my neighbors, God. Let, let that impact every single part of me. And would my response to you not just be you and, my, or you and I's relationship, but God, may it be my relationship with people and pointing them to you. God, we love you and we honor you and we thank you for your ahava. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen.